वेलकम वीवर्स इन कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ सीरीज ऑफ आई एफ आर एस नाइन टूडे अवर टॉपिक इज इम्पेयरमेंट माई नेम इज़ मोहम्मद शकील एंड वी आर रिकॉर्डिंग दिस लेक्चर ऑन द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ हाउस ऑफ प्रोफेशनल एजुकेशन दिस आई एफ आर एस इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन अ सिंगल एज वेल एज कंसोलिडेट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी क्यूरी रिकॉर्डिंग दिस लेक्चर प्लीज फील फ्री टू कॉन्टेक्ट अस ऑन द गिवन ई मेल आई Impairment of financial instruments. An entity shall recognize the loss allowance for expected credit losses on a financial asset that is measured through amortized cost, or fair value through OCI, or a lease receivable, or a contract asset, or a loan commitment, or a financial guarantee contract, where financial assets are measured at fair value through P and L basis. any impairment of the asset is automatically reflected in the measurement basis so no further action is required means no impairment when financial asset measured fair value through profit and loss count measurement of financial instruments can be segregated in four category number 1 is credit risk where we need to consider at each reporting date whether or not the credit risk is significant increasing since initial recognition if the credit risk is increasing significantly yes then an entity shall measure the loss allowance for the financial instrument at an amount equal to lifetime expected loss but if no then an entity shall measure the loss allowance for the financial instrument at an equal amount equal to 12 months expected credit losses if the loss allowance that has been measured lifetime in the previous year but determined at the current reporting date that the credit risk has no more significant to the entity the entity shall measure the loss allowance at an amount equal to 12 month expected credit losses at current reporting date prospectively there are some indications there are three levels for determining significant increase in credit risk level 1 reputable presumptions that credit risk has increased significantly when contractual payments are more than 30 days past due there will be no significant increase in the credit risk an entity shall measure the loss allowance for the financial instrument at an amount equal to 12 month expected credit losses and effective interest will be calculated on gross carrying amount of financial instrument before deducting expected losses level 2 when payments are 30 days past due a financial asset is considered to be a level 2 and lifetime ex- expected credit losses would be recognized there will be a significant increase in the credit risk an entity shall measure the loss allowance of a financial in- instrument at an amount equal to lifetime expected credit losses and effective interest will be calculated on gross carrying amount of financial instrument before deducting expected losses level 3 an entity can refute this presumption when it has reasonable and supportable information available that demonstrate that even if payment are passed due by 30 days or more it does not represent a significant increase in the credit risk of a financial instrument level 3 is applicable in case of credit impairment an entity shall measure the loss allowance for a financial instrument at an amount equal to the lifetime expected credit losses and effective interest will be calculated on net carrying amount of financial instrument the second category is simplified approach which we will discuss in detail in upcoming slide the third category is purchase 
or originated credit impaired financial asset at the reporting date an entity shall only recognize the cumulative change in lifetime accepted credit loss since initial recognition as loss allowance under pnl if the lifetime expected expected credit loss are less than the amount expected credit losses that were that were included in the estimated cash flow on initial recognition an entity shall recognize favorable change in lifetime expected credit losses as impairment gain under profit and loss account the third category is modified financial assets if the contractual cash flow on a financial asset has been renegotiated or modified and the financial asset was not derecognized an entity shall assess whether there is a significant increase in the credit risk of the financial instrument by comparing the risk of a default occurring at the reporting date and at initial recognition and finally recognize the incurred loss in lifetime the next case is simplified approach simplified approach applicable only for the financial instrument falling under ifrs 15 and ifrs 16 when we are considering trade receivable or contract assets are based our decisions on significant financing component means if significant financing component is not presented then an entity shall always measure the loss allowance at an amount equal to lifetime expected loss for trade receivables or contract assets and result from transaction that are within the scope of IFRS 15 but if yes contain a significant financing component in accordance with IFRS 15 but the entity choose as its accounting policy to measure the loss allowance at an amount equal to lifetime expected loss then we will recognize loss as lifetime under IFRS 16 lease receivables that result from transactions that are within the scope of IFRS 16 if the entity choose as its accounting policy to measure the loss allowance at an amount equal to lifetime expected loss in the absence of accounting policy simplified approach will not applicable and if we treat these financial instrument as per ifrs 9 in case of loan commitments and financial guarantee an entity consider the expected portion of a loan commitment that will be done down within the next 12 months when estimating 12 month expected credit loss level 1 and the expected portion of the loan commitment that will be drawn down over the remaining life of the loan commitment level 2 the level 3 expected credit loss model also applies to these of balance sheet financial commitments for loan commitment that are managed on a collective basis an entity estimate expected credit losses over the period until the entity has practical ability to withdraw the loan commitment the impairment assessment to be made at an reporting date if at the reporting date the going concern of the customer is not in doubt then no allowance will be necessary and such events after the reporting date is is a non adjusting event therefore result no impairment allowance is necessary it will be necessary to disclose detail of event and its impact on the collectability from the receivables viewers this is all about regarding the this topic if you are having some better suggestions please share with us so that we will be able to consider your valuable suggestions while recording our future lecture thank you